Hi, and welcome everybody to another of the Management 175 instructional videos. Today we're going to be looking at an introduction to industry analysis. Industry analysis is a very important skill to develop as a management student. You need to develop the ability to effectively and efficiently look at industries, look at markets, to break down the important factors that are influencing them. This can help you target new uh, potential consumers. This is a, a way to compete with other uh, competitor companies. Um, so within this context of the industry analysis, we're going to look at what an industry is, what a market is, and then the facets of information that you'll find when you start to look at these industry overviews and market report overviews. So for starters, industries and markets are intertwined. Here are three examples, the hotel, restaurants, and tourism industries. In the hotel industry, while it encompasses a variety of things, you can see that there are smaller uh, niche markets built into it. Uh, the luxury hotel market in a specific city, New York. Uh, you could look at a specific demographic group, like Hispanic travelers, or Asian Americans, or uh, soccer moms. The restaurant industry has you know, specific dining trends, uh, health food, gluten-free. You know, these are all trends that are influencing the restaurant industry, as well as types of restaurants, fast casual, ethnic restaurants, uh, fusion, as well as within the tourism industry, you know, business travel versus wedding and honeymoon tourism versus looking at a demographic group like baby boomers and their travel trends. The major components of an industry analysis are in this list right here. Looking at an overview, news and innovations, what things are impacting and forcing the companies and the major players to sort of scramble to try and compete more effectively. Consumer level market data. What are the trends that consumers are dealing with in where they spend their money? Whether it's uh, soda pop, whether it's tourism and hotels, whether it's uh, iPhones and uh, smartphones. Who are the major competitors? How are they interacting with each other? How much of the market do they control? And we'll look at some tables in just a minute that connect to a lot of these points. As well as the economic conditions. You know, if the economy is tanking, how does that influence any given industry or market? As well as government regulations. Something like the pharmaceutical industry has to deal with the Federal Drug Administration and all of their protocols and requirements for getting a drug passed. So you've got to pay attention to what are the rules and regulations that any industry has to deal with. There are a variety of types of industry analysis. Uh, we have books in the, the Parish Library that contain details on dozens of different types of analysis. So you have things like Porter's Five Forces, that looks at the power of the customer, the power of the suppliers, how much threat is there of somebody new coming in and shaking things up, as well as just the, potentially the threat of substitute products. Maybe you're just going to go spend your money someplace else. Uh, a specific example of that would be uh, a friend of mine worked for a company called Harden Furniture, and their competition was not Kimball's or the do-it-yourself furniture that you get from Target or Walmart. Their competition was Tiffany's. Their competition was BMW because you could go out and buy one of their love seats or you could go out and buy a diamond tennis bracelet. That's the price level that they were at and that's sort of the, the potential substitute. So you've got to be careful when you think about an industry and what the competition may or may not be. You can also look at things from other analysis perspectives. The value chain, which sort of breaks down the functions of a company to see how it is working within the industry, 
as well as something like Porter's Four Corners that looks at drivers, their current strategy, the management's assumptions, and how capable they are. So it's these types of analysis that look at the primary elements of understanding how an industry operates and what is influencing internally and externally. Now, once you start to look at the industry overview, you look at specifically the market share and market size, how the industry operates. In restaurants, it's all about new menu items and table turnover. You want people to come in, eat, finish, and then get out so you can refill that table. In the pharmaceutical industry, you can deal with are you creating new drugs by spending a lot more on research and development or are you buying new companies that are creating new drugs to add to your portfolio of medications? Because as soon as your drugs go generic, you're not going to make any more money on those. So you've got to have, figure out what the process is within an industry and figure out how it operates so that you can compete better. What's affecting growth? Is it primarily consumer related? Is it supplier related? Is it, econ is it economy related? Who those major players are? And you can see that the, the components list that we looked at previously match up with the information you'll get out of an overview. So you'll see things like market share, market size. How big is the market and who are the major competitors and players? This table here shows trends in airline brands. And you can see some have been doing much better than others over this five-year span. I can then look at the actual size of the market, both in numbers and percent, as well as in dollar value. So you'll see a lot of different numbers and tables like that. Now the other important factor within an industry overview are the trends. And this is just a sample taken from a market report about the key trends in lodging and gaming and what is sort of affecting one or affecting the other in a different way. Uh, shows that there are a variety of ways to grow, uh, large-scale employment of service-oriented workers, and how supply and demand are being influenced. Now we'll keep moving along and highlight just briefly that there are systems, industry classification systems. Uh, there is the North American classification system and the standard industrial classification system. Right now we're still sort of stuck between these two. The, the SIC system is older and is not being updated anymore. The NAICS system is newer and has better granularity so that I can look at an industry like hotels and see that there are a couple of different classification numbers to cubbyhole types of companies. So I can use these numbers to search list, uh, databases and search for lists of companies so that I know they're doing exactly the same thing. We can then take a look at a couple of other examples, restaurants and the different types of restaurants, as well as look at what the actual definition of this. So these classification systems exist and, like I said, help you cubbyhole types of companies, help you make sure that you're looking at and you know that you're looking at exactly the same thing. All right. So within the uh, internal competitive landscape, this is what is happening within an industry. What are the your competitors doing? How are you going to respond to what they're doing? Um, what are those influences sort of affecting the industry? Does geography matter? And what's technology doing? So I can zoom in again and we can look at some quick examples. You know, in this case, this is JetBlue Airways and they're offering spa products in their red eye flights this might entice customers to fly JetBlue more often than other airlines on their red-eye flights. How will other companies respond to this? 
I can then look at key trends about how transportation might be increasing, what's happening to rail, or I can look at other key points, say, in the airline industry, how it's growing, how the, uh, the, the recession is hurting it, if they're bouncing back or not. So within these industry overviews and these, these reports and surveys that you're, you'll be expected to look at and find, you want to watch for not only tables of numbers showing you trends, but in addition to those, th those tables of numbers, you want to see what the reports are actually talking about and the key elements that you can pull out to strengthen your own recommendation or solution to a problem. And we'll jump back into the external situation. And notoriously, the external situation is all about the consumer. Now, the consumer could be another business. You know, this is a very generic idea, consumer. If there's a lot of business-to-business -business activity for any given company in an industry, those potential customers are their consumers. But where are they spending their money? What's influencing their behavior? Do they have specific preferences or habits that are affecting them? We can look at something like indoor water park trends broken down by education and age in this table. And we can see, you know, the, the large number of people who have visited an indoor water park in the last 12 months, and then some other elements that we'll go into in a more specific tutorial about this database. But there's lots of consumer level data out there highlighting what they're doing and what their habits are. We can look at the impact of global terrorism. And this is just a, a header from one of these reports that we looked at. We can then jump over to trends like last minute travel of any age group versus the 18 to 34 year olds because that might be your target market. And often when you're doing an industry analysis, you're trying to figure out how are you influencing that target market? What is your target market? And um, how can you better tap into their preferences and desires? So let's move this along. So to wrap this up, analyzing an industry gives you a deeper understanding of the industry, the, the smaller markets underneath it, who the major players are, and those internal and external influences. So using the, the table, the key components, as you look at an industry, will be important when you're trying to analyze that industry, when you're trying to prepare for a job interview because you don't want to just walk in and know what's on your resume. You want to be able to talk to the company that you're sitting down with and actually um, have a conversation about what's working, what's not working, and how you might fit into their strategy much better. As always, if you've got any questions, either email us or talk to us in class. Thanks very much.